What's going on, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your hump day Wednesday, early afternoon. This is NYG Jeffy T85, and I'm going to talk about some of my confidence and some of my concerns for the New York Mets heading into this 2023 Major League Baseball season. So some of the things that make me confident going into this season are, I have to say, the couple of things that make me confident is the top of the lineup, mainly the table setters. <laughs> because I know when the type of guys that this New York Mets have at the top of this lineup, whether it's Starling Marte, Brandon Nimmo, or Jeff McNeil, these three guys are contact hitters. They're going to get on base, and they're going to be the guys that are consistently going to be able to steal bases, get on base, slap the ball around the field, and get in good running position so you can allow your power hitters to be able to come in and drive these guys home later on in the game. That's what gives me some of the most confidence is the top of this Major League, this New York Mets lineup going into this season. Because of the fact that they don't, some of these guys don't strike out a lot, namely McNeil and Marte. <laughs> Nimmo, he does need to cut down a little bit on his strikeouts, but he gets on base a ton, and his on base percentage is extremely high, as well as his OPS. So that's one of the things that gives me a lot of confidence. Another thing that gives me a lot of confidence: the starting pitching lot, the starting pitching staff, and this is like going to be a confidence and a concern. The starting pitching staff has potential to be really good. I mean, really good, because we know when Verlander, when Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer are healthy, we know how good these guys can be. These guys can go out there and they can throw five to six shutout innings on a consistent basis, maybe even seven. And they can give your bullpen a chance to just go out there and give Edwin Diaz or maybe your setup man at Edwin Diaz time to just go out there and finish the job. That's one of the biggest benefits for this New York Mets team is the fact that these pitchers, <laughs> and I'm even going to talk about Quintana, who is a solid middle-of-the-rotation guy, Kodai Senga, while he's an unknown, the guy has electric stuff, and he could be one of those X-Factors on this team. And even Carlos Carrasco, who actually had a very solid season last year with the New York Mets when he's healthy. This, March, this Mets starting pitching staff has the chance to be really good this year. It does. Because all these guys can just go out there, and these guys can pitch four, five, six, seven innings of shutout ball. Or even one hit, one or two hit ball, which is a very good thing to have when you have older, they are older pitchers, but guys that can go out there consistently put up good numbers and put up four, five, six shutout innings for your team. <laughs> now, also, one of the things that gives me confidence, I think the bullpen is going to be a lot better. I do. When you pick up guys like Brooks Raley, and David Robertson in your bullpen. Plus you bring back Drew Smith. You have Edwin Diaz back. You could even throw, you could throw Tyler McGill or David Peterson into the bullpen. This New York Mets bullpen, in my opinion, could be one of the strengths on this team. You might call me crazy. But Diaz, we know how good Diaz is when he's healthy. And when he's on his game. Diaz is right now one of, if not the best closer in Major League Baseball. In my opinion, when you get bringing guys like Brooks Raley, who is now going to be that left-handed pitcher out of the bullpen, as well as you got guys like Drew Smith, David Robertson. I forgot about Adam Adovino. For, I can't forget about Adam Adovino. You got Tommy Hunter could be playing a factor into the bullpen as well. Drew Smith, even Bryce Montez de Oca, as inconsistent as he was coming up last year from the ball, from the minor leagues, he's got an electric arm. Same thing with Zach Green. <laughs> this bullpen should be very good, in my opinion. And it all starts with Edwin Diaz. He's the key of this bullpen going forward. And one more thing that gives me confidence, the manager. Because I, I, while some people have some reservations about Buck Showalter as a manager, the fact that some of you say he can't get it done when it comes to the postseason, he struggles, you know, with in-game stuff. 
He sometimes gets outmanaged. Maybe he's past his prime. Maybe he's, the game is passed him by. I think overall, Buck Showalter is a leader among men. And he knows what to do and the buttons to press to get this baseball team in the right position to go out there and succeed. I have confidence every time Buck Showalter is out there that he's going to make the right moves to put this team in the best position to succeed in 2023. I do. Now, some of the things that gives me cause for concern. Number one, I'm going to go right back to that starting pitching staff. While I said the part starting pitching staff can be good, the starting pitching staff is also an older pitching staff. Max Scherzer, 38 years old, multiple injuries last year. Justin Verlander, just turned 40 years old. Missed all of 2021. Yes, he was healthy last year, but he missed all the previous year. Jose Quintana, 35 years old. Gotten injured before. Carlos Carrasco, 35, 36 years old. Kodai Senga, pitched a lot over in Japan, 30, 30 years old. <clears throat> and then after that, you don't really have any major league pitchers that are set to get going in the minor leagues right now that if, God forbid, you suffer injuries... You have David Peterson, and you have Tyler McGill. You also have a Joey Lucchese, who they're stretching out to be a starter, as well as Alicia Hernandez, whom they picked up from the Florida, Mar the Miami Marlins this offseason in a trade. But starting pitching staff is very old. And if these guys deal with any type of injuries, it could become a problem for this team going into the, going into the uh, MLB season. Another thing that concerns me, the bottom of the Mets lineup is still a big-time question mark. You can argue they have a very good top five, maybe top six, between Brandon Nimmo, Starling Marte, Jeff McNeil, Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonso, and you can argue Mark Canna. But after that, the catching position is a question mark with Omar Navarez and Tomas Nito, who are more of defensive backstops than they are offensive backstops. Plus, Francisco Alvarez, as much as we all tout this kid and being one of the next big prospects for this team, he still has to go out there and prove that he can be a legit star at the catching position. Plus, he's still got to work on his defense. Third base is still an issue. While Eduardo Escobar had a very good second half of the season, he was abysmal during the first half of the season. Daniel Vogelback and Darren Ruff are going to be holding down the DH spot. Can these guys be able to go out there and bounce back after what was a very rough season for both of them since getting traded to the Mets last year? Ruff from the Giants and Vogelback from the Pirates. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> also, another thing that does concern me is the health. Because while the Mets went out and went 100 games last year, the Mets, for the most part, were a very healthy team. Yeah, Scherzer missed time here and there. Yeah, DeGrom missed time here and there. Every team is going to have some type of injuries. But the lineup, for the most part, the lineup, for the most part, was healthy during the entire season. The only real significant injury the Mets had last year was the injury to Starling Marte towards the end of the season, which actually ended up hurting that team and ended up hurting their chances at winning that division when he went down with that fractured finger in August of last year. But for the most part, Nimmo played every game. McNeil pretty much played every game. Alonzo pretty much played every game. Canna was out there. Lindor played in pretty much every game. Escobar was out there for the most part. The Mets didn't really have any big-time significant injuries to their, to their lineup. <laughs> And even the rest of their starting pitching staff didn't miss a whole lot of time either. You know, guys missing, guys having 10-day DL st uh, IL stints from here and there, but nothing too much to worry about. Can this team remain healthy again in 2023? We'll have to wait and see. But either way, I still do believe this Mets team has got the capability to be at least a 100-plus win team this year. But you guys let me know in the comment section, what are your confidence, what, what things in this, on this team make you confident, and what team, things on this team give you the biggest concern heading into this 2023 Major League Baseball season for the New York Mets? 
Of course, as always, turn on the bell for notifications on the next video or short dropping on the channel around the New York Mets. And let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this New York Mets team heading into the 2023 Major League Baseball season. What gives you causes for concern and what gives you the utmost confidence with this baseball team heading into this upcoming season? Thank you very much, everybody. I hope all of you enjoy your hump day Wednesday. Take it easy, and as always, let's go New York Mets. All you got to do is you got to believe in those boys from Queens.